The only easy day was yesterday. Welcome to The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, the official Navy SEAL podcast. The open water can be both deadly and unforgiving. Before sailors become SEALs or SWIC, they must demonstrate mastery of this punishing and unpredictable element, making it their most valuable ally. I'm Daniel Fletcher. Today we speak with aquatics expert Dan Kish at the Naval Special Warfare Preparatory School. We discuss the best practices, tools, and techniques used exclusively by Navy SEAL or SWIC candidates and operators, particularly the combat side stroke. Let's dive in. For starters, thank you for taking the time. Uh, your expertise is super important to be able to share with as many people as possible that are trying to get successfully through this program. For starters, if you can just go ahead and spend a little bit of time talking about your role here in Naval Special Warfare, and then we can take it from there. Sounds good. Uh, my name's Dan. I am one of the physical training leaders here at Naval Special Warfare Preparatory School, and my main point of focus is the aquatic side. So it's much more than just swimming. We uh, spend a lot of time on treading, water rescue, pool comp skills. Um, my job is to help make the candidates as comfortable and confident in the water over the eight weeks here and plan and execute all the workout safely to the, the highest standard that we expect of them. The water aspect of, of kind of the initial exposure to um, the standards of the physical standards uh, test is, is usually where a lot of people I think are have their, at their weakest. Um, at least most people have not been exposed to the level of swimming that is needed, required to be able to make it in the program or even kind of start training. So I think that your information will be really valuable for a lot of people listening. Maybe just if you could start off with talking just a little bit about your background in aquatics. I'm, I'm guessing that um, you were a swimmer or you were involved in some sort of water sports before you came into the program. So correct. Uh, I always loved being in the water. I was that kid. You couldn't get me out of the pool, the lake growing up. Uh, I got pretty good at swimming, so I swam, you know, the aquatic kid, high school, club, uh, college, a little bit of postgraduate swimming, so all the staff members are Division I swimmers, collegiate swimmers, uh, did some postgraduate swimming, was good, got into coaching, became successful at that, and I've been here since class 297, so just over five years now, and uh, I love it, we get all walks of life from kids that barely seen a pool, barely passed the PST to get in, to Olympic gold medalists, and everything in between there. So all walks of life come through, and uh, kids just want to learn, get better in the water. But water is, majority of the time, their weakest you know, environment to be in. We're humans, we don't belong in the water at all, and a lot of kids come to prep, not prep for what we're about to do here. The focus of, the, of this uh, episode is, is the combat side stroke. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second. You mentioned a couple other areas um, that your focus is on, whether it's treading water and stuff like that. Are there areas that maybe, other than the combat side stroke, that people maybe should investigate in, in addition to um, that stroke specifically to uh, at least kind of get themselves familiar with? Absolutely. Besides just swimming combat side stroke, we swim it slick, so without fins on and then with fins on. We also train freestyle almost every day, and we also swim breaststroke here. So they all are a great asset to know and learn. Uh, the better you are at all the strokes, the better you'll be at any one. We'll even throw some butterfly just for fun in there as well. Great you know, cardio building tool, great fuel for the water, but they all serve a purpose. We swim a lot of freestyle when we start doing rescues to get to your victim. Uh, great you know, way to increase your lung capacity there. Breaststroke, we wanna learn the pull for guiding and siding purposes, the kick to help you with the tread and to learn underwater breaststroke pullouts or the most efficient way to swim underwater there. So basically, I mean, you covered almost all aspects of, of aquatic sports, you know, uh, in terms of swimming styles. Um, I would be hesitant to say maybe it, it, it's worth someone's time to really become very, very, very proficient in all of those. Obviously, they're going to be using those strokes to train in a more of a fitness context and more of a just development context, not necessarily they're going to be specifically quizzed or tested in those areas. Um, but obviously, it's helpful to know that that's not the only thing you're going to be doing in the water, obviously. Correct. Yeah, right. the, the exit test, so in order to leave Naval Special Warfare Preparatory School, you have to do the 1,000-meter swim combat side stroke under 20 minutes, which our average time is right around 17 minutes. However, 
We still want you to become great at all the strokes, all the skills. It's just more tools you can add to your toolbox to help you out further down the pipeline. So obviously we're going to try to unpack a little bit about some of the uh, unique, I guess, challenges or difficulties that people have, or, or maybe not so unique, common um, difficulties people have with the specific stroke. So if you want to kind of start in a really a broad sense, maybe take a thousand foot up view of areas that you think are common that people have a misconception or maybe a very, very, very common mistake and maybe the quick fixes for those things just as kind of a real quick touch on that area. So combat side stroke, I swam competitively for over a decade and I didn't even know what combat side stroke was until I got into the military. Right. And then I started realizing what the stroke was, why it was created, and then how to critique and correct it to be as efficient as possible, um, try and be the fastest as possible, and still create that low profile while swimming combat mm -hmm. side stroke. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times, the first couple weeks here, and what really need to stress is technically correct swimming. So work on perfect, pretty combat side stroke. Speed will eventually come, but focus on just perfect technique starting off. Um, trying to be as long and as efficient in the water as you can. We see a lot of students or candidates come through that have you know, a little bit bigger and bulkier muscles. Those are not always the best for in the water. Right. You know, decreasing your range of motion. You know, we want to be as long as possible. Get your stroke count down to help you prepare for those you know, longer open water swims that will be taking place. So is it fair to say that you, uh, that you see a lot of people that are maybe even just learning for the first time, kind of trying to quote over muscle or kind of push and put too much into it and not focus on, on taking their time and, and lengthening the, their stroke and being efficient? Is, is that, you think, accurate? Yes. Uh, witnessed that today during a PST. Just because you're taking more and more strokes, you know, you're swimming yeah. more violent and higher turnover rates. Sometimes you feel like you're going faster, but the clock doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. um, there's a kid swimming next to him, taking half as many strokes and going faster. So I see that man attitude where you want to race and compete and you're taking a ton of more strokes, but you're just working harder to go, you know, the same time or sometimes even slower. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're getting anywhere faster. Correct. Um, are there any big areas or, or, or maybe what are some of your cues that you say to get people to kind of slow down? I would obviously think just like a running race, people would try to they go out hot, you know, their adrenaline's pumping, they're breathing faster, everything, you know what I mean? Absolutely, and we see that here. Uh, over the eight weeks, we do many different workouts from short, fast, you know, high intensity sprints to longer distance. And the last couple weeks here, we focus a lot on pacing. We always have the clock facing you. You always watch, you know, the clock when you leave, what your splits are, are you hitting your goal times? Are you making the set? But Running and swimming, you're always against the clock. You know, in the weight room, it's weights. In the pool, you have to watch the clock to see you know, how fast you are going. Other than um, kind of, I would say, and excuse me for not using maybe the prep, the correct terminology, maybe strokes per minute or whatever the term is. Um, what else do you see in terms of kind of like quote sloppy form? That's a really common thing that you're constantly having to cue people with, you know, not to do. So other things we see in the water in the pool. A lot of candidates will be swimming uphill, which is quite natural with the body position in the water. Uh, same thing as running uphill. Running uphill, it's a lot more energy. Now, when you say swimming uphill, can you give me a, a kind of a, what, what that means to you? Coaches are yelling at you like your feet are dragging on the bottom of the pool. Your hips are sagging down. You are creating more drag for yourself. Gotcha. So running uphill is very difficult. Swimming uphill would be the same metaphor for that. To correct that, we want to try and get your legs going a little bit more. So your feet should be, you know, near at the surface. Your hips should be at the surface as well as, you know, your whole body line, your head. Normally, it's when people are not using their legs as much or thicker candidates in the water. But this will have a direct correlation. Once we start doing buddy toes, you're going to have that same bad body position. Now you have to toe someone and you're just creating a significant, you know, higher amount of drag for yourself which is, you know, stay away from swimming uphill. And so is that a, typically a head position issue that, that, that kind of then lead the body follows it? Or, or what, what is, um, what's usually the culprit there? So correct, uh, head position does play a major role for that. The top of your head will always be pointing in the direction of travel. Mm -hmm. Majority of candidates, we will see, you know, you can swim really good, showing me the top of your head point forward. 
but then they go and take a breath and they will lift their head to breathe, which will shoot that body position you know, back uphill, which is incorrect, creating more drag. A lot of our candidates are good until they do take a breath. So A, don't breathe, or B, learn how to control that breath. Or get in and get back into position. Absolutely, so snap that quick breath in, you will have one eye in the water, one eye out of the water. Now when your mouth is above the surface, you are inhaling only. We should not be hearing you exhale and inhale when your mouth is above the surface. You know, so dump that air out right before your breath. You know, if you're very negative in the water, keep the air in, but right before your breath, dump that air out. When your mouth is above the surface, inhale only, eyes right back down. And that's for freestyle and for combat side stroke, same, same body position. So would place. you say that is probably the largest um, deficiency in people's uh, stroke whenever they arrive, or, or really the thing you see the most common is body position in terms of kind of swimming uphill like you're speaking about and not being able to uh, breathe very efficiently and get back into the right position? Is that the most common problem that you see? Body position plays a major role. Um, conditioning and speed you know, will come along, but if you're swimming uphill, you're just burning wasteful energy. Another major issue we see is a, a timing issue, which we see candidates stop, pause, or sink at some point in their stroke. We always want to move you know, forward in the water, whether it's combat side stroke, breast stroke, or freestyle. A lot of times we'll see them move forward in the stroke and then take a breath and stop, pause, sink, and then start moving forward again, stop, pause, sink. We want to always move forward in the water, even during your breath. So never shut down your legs, uh, maintain that you know, body moving forward. Don't, just because you're taking a breath does not mean you need to stop, pause, or sink. So what do you think of the culprit is there? My first uh, kind of instinct is to think that the rhythm there is, is not quite, um, at least comf they're not comfortable quite in the rhythm of the stroke head, an experience thing, or is there, are there other culprits? It's actually difficult to do. So they will have a you know, pull, breathe, kick, glide, pretty common pattern for combat side stroke and for breast stroke. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can start with your arms, then get your breath, execute your kick and hopefully have a long glide. Now during the breath part of that, don't stop dead in the water, do not sink and create more drag, and you should you know, always be moving forward. So once again, back to the breathing, normally our candidates are good until they do take a breath and then stop in the water there. Keep your legs going, so especially with freestyle, never disengage your legs, always keep your legs going behind you. And then combat side stroke, you know, during your recovery, try and have as the least amount of underwater recovery as possible. So when your arms are underneath the water, or try and have the least amount of resistance that you can. So active streamlining. So active streamlining, and you said something about recovery. Now you're talking about basically getting your hands back out in front of you for the stroke again. Can you maybe go into a little bit more detail about that? You're talking about the efficiency or least amount of resistance. Is that is that what you're saying? Correct. So for combat side stroke. Uh, it was designed to be very low profile, so no white water or splashing taking place. Uh, it's very efficient stroke. However, just like breaststroke arms, the underwater recovery part of the stroke is underwater, which is not very efficient because you're pushing yourself backwards when you do that. Okay. We want to over-exaggerate the underwater recovery and minimize the amount of resistance when you move your hands back out into the streamlined position. So you're not fighting yourself, essentially. Don't push yourself backwards at all during your strokes there. Okay, okay. So is this stroke used primarily as a test and, and fitness um, mechanism, if you will, or is this stroke used operationally during mission? So both are correct. Uh, the stroke is great to increase your overall fitness levels without banging up your body, right? Swimming is a great way, whether whatever stroke you're doing, increase your overall fitness with very low to no impact, right? You should be able to swim, you know, for hours, still feel good. It's not like you're banging up your body, high stress, high impact environment. So when you do swim, make sure you are over exaggerating full range of motion. You should be feeling good, feel loose in the water. So that plays the cardio you know, fitness role in it. But operationally speaking, uh, it was designed to be efficient so you could be able to swim your long distances, you know, infiltrate and extract a couple miles and still carry out the mission. The low profile aspect, so you're, when you're swimming up to shore, 
you don't have a bunch of white water splashing behind you, a bunch of noise coming in. And it is quite simple to learn and execute. Um, we do a lot of the fine tuning, getting dialed in here. But if you look throughout history, you know, swimming has played a, an important role in the history of mankind and in warfare in every century. Uh, this goes back, back in the day, but just recently with the UDTs, you look at World War II, Korea, Vietnam, there's many aquatic stories from you know, the greats or Medal of Honor recipients where if they did not have that maritime aquatic background, we would not have heard about these stories at all. How does combat side stroke differ from uh, the regular side stroke? Is there, is there glaring differences, very similar? Just maybe kind of give me some detail on that would be great. So the common side stroke that you see from swim lessons or, you know, like at your local YMCA, where you are basically, you know, picking apples off a tree and putting them in the basket. I remember being told that when right, I was like right, three right. years old. Combat side stroke, you're gonna have a little bit more rotation, so we're not gonna be swimming flat. You so mean that in the hips or in the shoulders area? So, just like any sport, you'll have a lot of power come from your hips and your core. Uh, back to those common mistakes that we see from our candidates where people swim flat, which we do not want. Swimming is not just your arms up, swimming is not just your legs down. You wanna get your whole body engaged, drive with your hips and your core back on to streamline on your stomach. So I see, maybe in the, I would I say there's no glide phase of the stroke, but towards the end of the stroke, I see what you're saying. You're, you're facing the bottom of the pool more than just facing the side of the pool. Correct, your belly button will not point to the wall the entire time, you'll be rotating. So your belly button will point at the wall and the bottom throughout every cycle. When you take your breath, you know, with one eye in the water, one eye out, you'll be looking at the wall then you're gonna, once you execute your scissor kick, so your top leg will start initiating that rotation, your top leg will go forward, execute your scissor kick, and while doing that, you're gonna drive with your hips back into the streamlined position. So it should be quite fluid motion during your know, pull breathe, powerful kick, and glide, but we're not swimming flat on one side the entire time. You'll be rotating just like we do in freestyle, same thing with combat side stroke. Drive with your hips and your core, full body exercise, don't swim flat, and then don't over rotate either. So we see some candidates where they want to take a big breath and they look up to the ceiling and then they have to spend all that time going back into the streamlined position on their stomach, mm. wasting a lot of time and over rotating onto their backs, which is what we don't want. That's kind of what you're talking about, the, the one eye cue, as opposed to your whole, you know, whole face and your both ears out of the water, you know, kind of thing. And that plays a role with swimming uphill. If you pick your head up to breathe for your breath, you know, your hips will drop. If you over rotate on your back, you're just wasting more time, which is unnecessary and inefficient. So we want to be as efficient as possible while swimming there. We're looking at the PST a little bit, kind of like a race, even if it's just against the clock or yourself. Um, is working other strokes, you think, really beneficial to kind of helping the combat side stroke time diminish? in terms of kind of water fitness, if you will, that's probably not the right term, but. No, absolutely. Uh, the better you are at all four strokes, the better you'll be at any one. All those elite swimmers, if you see, you know, just a butterfly or just a backstroker, they swim all four strokes almost every day still. Whether it's, you know, just a little bit, a little warm up, a cool down, you know, main set, you will always train, you know, more than just combat side stroke on your good side the entire time. So, like I said, we'll, do some freestyle almost every day with, you know, give yourself challenging breathing patterns, a wonderful way to build up your lung capacity while, you know, having a little bit of elevated heart rate with freestyle. Combat side stroke, both sides. We will train breaststroke. Um, the first week here, we'll break it down where we have, you know, a demonstration, drills, which uh, drills are just bite-sized pieces of the stroke broken down. So just the kick or just the arms you know, focusing on being as hydrodynamic and focusing on the underwater recovery aspect. So we will focus a lot those first week or two here on drills or just bite-sized pieces of stroke to, you know, put it all together in the long run.
Um, so my kind of takeaway so far about kind of developing up your combat side stroke ability is general comfort in the, in the water through a variety of strokes and, and, and being in there often enough that your body's kind of not necessarily grown used to it, but it, it really has flexibility and strength to the point where you're comfortable enough to get the time that you need. It's not that you need to do these crazy static breath holds or put weights on yourself or uh, do this type of really hard plowing work so much as it is getting yourself comfortable enough that you can do the stroke properly. And, and I think putting that before busting your butt on the, on, on the side stroke that you're not doing right, it seems like that kind of stuff comes even more important than your combat side stroke. Is, is that true, or am I really kind of a little bit off there? No, or? That's, that's a good summary of what we're talking about here, that focus on your part bit by bit, and then you'll eventually put it all together, work on that perfect technique, and then slowly start you know, increasing the amount of time you spend in the pool, then start watching the clock a little bit more, you know, a little bit more intense workouts, and then start watching your times drop, hopefully. This is a new stroke for, for, I would say, the vast majority of people, if not everybody. You know, people have probably barely been exposed to the side stroke, the normal side stroke, we'll call it, unless they've had swimming instruction, right? Um, so combat side stroke being totally new, people I'm sure will jump on the web or, or maybe if they're lucky or smart enough to find a swim coach or a team or group, ask them about it. What do you see that's common misinformation about this specific portion of the training process? One of uh, the worst ones that I witness online and all the staff see it too, is uh, when swimming combat side stroke, your lead arm or the arm that always, you know, your bottom arm. So if you're swimming on your right side, your right hand, just like a breaststroke pull, that right hand should stay out in front of your body. You're not pulling that arm all the way down to your hips and then pushing yourself backwards almost with the underwater recovery portion. So your lead arm, or you're swimming on your right side, your right hand will always be out in front of your chest. So a small range of motion. You're not getting a lot out of the arm. So during your pull and your breath, you know, your hand will start coming towards your chest. And then when you execute your kick and your glide, push it back in a streamline. Yeah. But do not pull that lead arm all the way down to your hip, stop in the water, and then all that underwater recovery is going to start pushing you the opposite way of what you want to be traveling. And so that's something that you see as kind of a maybe piece of common misinformation. I, you know what, honestly, I think with the, with the term even side stroke, um, it seems like that lead hand, is, is that what you call it, the lead hand? Lead, lead arm, yep. your, your lead arm is doing a little bit more of a, a kind of a tugging crawl, it's not doing a full stroke. It's kind of, they're almost treading water, pulling you forward kind of consistently, not, not, not a, a full stroke, so to speak. It's more of a repetitive kind of um, crawl, I guess is maybe not the right word, but. Correct, it's a smaller range of motion out in front of your body, which is a sculling motion. So keeping your hand, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of power out of it. It's similar to a breaststroke pull, just enough to pick your head up for your breath and shoot back down a streamline. Yeah, more of a kind of a corkscrew and not a full shoulder, you know, stroke all the way to your side. I see what you're saying. But that also plays a role once we start introducing buddy toes or water rescues, you're gonna do that same exact motion with that lead arm the entire time. So it's still, you know, a drill that we'll do here that will also be used down the pipeline with water rescue. So it plays a role and it reduces the amount of time of underwater recovery in the stroke, which should make you more efficient, less drag, increasing speed there. So for people, for the folks at home, um, it would be great to see this visually. You're, you're showing me more of a, um, of a rotation of, uh, past the elbow, um, a circular rotation as opposed to a full stroke. So it's kind of a constant, more of a rotation as opposed to a stroke. That, that, that does make a lot more sense to be able to keeping you from having more of a cycle in the stroke and keeping you moving forward as opposed to that pause that you're talking about earlier as a problem. There, there's a lot of talk about um, technique and that's also in the, the kind of judging standards for the PST, whether it's pull-ups, push-ups, um, clean reps. Is there anything for people testing themselves in this process to be aware of in terms of technique that will get them kind of a, a red flagged or, you know, this lap doesn't count or anything like that that they need to be aware of? Yes. So when we do our testing here, your wrists will always be in the water. So the whole point of combat side stroke is to have that low profile where we're not taking, you know, freestyle strokes with your arms flying all over the place. 
So maintaining that low profile of keeping you know, your wrist or hands in the water at all times. So if we start seeing hands come out, you know, you'll be warned strictly once by an instructor staff member. And if it happens again, you'll be pulled from the test. So that's one of our criteria, as well as never touching the bottom of the pool while we swim. You know, if you take a break, you know, 500 yard swim, operationally speaking, this can be taking place in the you know, ocean. There's no, there's no wall or floor to stop and take a break. So never touch the bottom of the pool when you're swimming and don't spend time on the walls. So when you do practice in the standard 25 yard pool, spend as little to no time on the walls as you can. When you're tested uh, here, um, what, what apparatus is used in terms of on, on person? The initial entrance PST, you have to swim your 500 yard swim, which can be swum combat side stroke, breaststroke, or basic side stroke, and that has to take place under 1230 in order to get into our program. You'll be wearing tri shorts with the you know the traditional UDT shorts. And so you're talking basically like swim trunks, spandex kind of setup. Yes, not a lot of drag. They're not beach board shorts. Right, right, which right. Which are good for training. Actually, like almost like a running short kind of. Correct. With a standard dive mask on, so covering the nose. During the exit test, you will have the same swim trunks, a dive mask, but now you'll be having fins and booties on. So rubber booties around your feet, your fins over that, your dive fins over that, and you'll be executing a thousand meter combat side stroke under 20 minutes. 17 minutes is our average, so you should be crushing that. You should be able to float you know, a 17 minute, thousand meter swim, no problem, before you leave here. And that's mask as well there? With your mask on. Okay. Well, great. I'll let you kind of um, kind of summarize and give us the, you know, you have 15 seconds to give somebody the, the important pointers of the combat side stroke and then, you know, water comfort in general. Find a pool, get in and swim, try and join a swim team or a water polo club, get with your friends, get in the water, spend as much time in the water as you can and come to prep with a good base or foundation that we can build on. Well, Dan, thank you so much. Where can people find out more about the specific standards for combat side stroke and any other details they might want to about this topic? Go to sealswick.com. Wonderful illustrations, pictures, and descriptions about how to swim combat side stroke and what to expect here at Naval Special Warfare Preparatory School. Great, Dan. Thank you so much for your time and all the great information. Anytime. Find out more at sealswick.com and join us again for the next NSW podcast. Head's off, eyes open. Yeah.